All right, we just submitted exercise one. You have until 11.59 tonight to get that in before deadline. And we're going to go to the unit modules. And like it says in our course outline, we're going to go to unit three, because that's the unit we're starting today. Notice that the last unit was on image mining, and it was about finding good examples of other people's pixels to use in something called compositing to make our own work. This is about vector shapes. And if you remember from our intro slides, two major types of digital art disciplines, one is compositing and one is vectors. And they have almost nothing in common in how they are actually produced on the computer, but they have a ton in common in how they're manipulated to make images. So even though this is a totally different type of image, these are called flat graphics. We're going to be learning how to make flat graphics uh, through designing our own custom emoji. We do it by layering up not lines or pixels. We do it by layering up ve vector shapes. And I always think of it instead of like collage, which is what compositing was like, this is like having die cuts from construction paper of different colors and then like making dolls or making pictures out of it. So layering up cut out paper is a good way of thinking of vectors. So this is our intro sheet. This is all the stuff we're going to learn. The only thing you have to turn in for unit three is exercise two, which will be due next class. Here are some past examples. And just like the last exercise, you get to pick your theme. You can use the same theme. So if you did Spider-Man, you can do a Spider-Man emoji. Uh, if you did a band book, this was one done for the Lord of the Rings. This is a little orc emoji. But the big difference here is we're going to start by using like a clip what is it called? Pick crew kind of site that makes emojis for us. So we're going to design our own custom emoji using this website, which gives us very limited options. And then we're going to recreate that with our own vector shapes. We're actually going to use PhotoP again for this, but we're going to use the vector shape tool in PhotoP and only that tool. And in that way, we get to play with vectors, even though we're in a program we've already had some experience with. How do we know they're vectors? Well, because they look like this. These are all the outlines on the vectors that make this shape. They are not pixel based. They are based on the path. That can be really any complex set of curves and lines. And then you can either fill that path or outline that path or both. And then you layer that up to make your image. So we're going to get a sense of that today. The project itself, I like to give some professional examples. This kind of flat graphic design is used a lot in icon design. You'll see it all over your phone in the, the icons for different apps you might use. It's used a lot, of course, in branding, logos. Here it is in some illustration. And here are some artists that continue to use this kind of flat shape design. And we see it maybe most commonly in emoji design. So emojis are vectors. And they're used in the same way that text is used. In fact, you can even change your keyboard to be an emoji keyboard. So your keys are actually different emojis. What, what's the other vector we're looking at? All of these letter forms are vectors. So there's one design for them based on the typeface, like this type of B. And I can easily make that B bigger or smaller, and it never loses resolution. That's because it's coming from a vector file, not from a raster pixel-based file. We can see examples of flat graphics in fine art. This is uh, Andy Warhol's silkscreen print of Marilyn Monroe. And we can obviously see it in a lot of our commercial design. Now, we're going to start with what's called flat shape design, which is just doing a single vector for a single pixel color. But then we'll have the option, just like we did of coloring our, our exercise one, the option of adding some flat 2.0 effects to it. So shading, texture, gradations, and making it a little bit more dimensional. If you want to do it on a band book, you can. If you want to pick a new topic, I'm going to stick with my children's book. But we start with this site. So this is just a pretty simple emoji maker. I'll kind of walk you through it here. 
This is just sketching for your idea because it helps you understand in vector shapes how it works. So you can click this regenerate option and see a lot of random ones. And what kind of emoji do I want to make for my, my uh, zipper up a zoo? Well, I want to do the Professor Wormbog. So I might need to find some inspiration first. So here is my guy. I'm just going to go ahead and open this image in a new tab. And zoom in. And download it. I was trying to move it, but I'm too zoomed in. You can make anything you want into an emoji, right? The emoji maker has them all kind of facing forward. So that's just a sketch to get you started, but then you can make any alterations you want because we're going to make each shape ourselves. So yes, I have the image of him here. This is one option. Right? So I could do something like this, do a little screen grab of that. Out of simple shapes, I could search for more of him. So let me just do a quick search for Professor Wormbug as an image. And so here is more of a front view. And he has a huge nose, right? So maybe this is more my inspiration. But I get to interpret it, right? I'm not trying to do a full illustration. I'm trying to do it with simple, flat shapes, like emojis. Okay, so I have my inspiration. I did screen grabs, so they're on my desktop. What can I do to organize it? I'm going to open up my, my class folder. I'm going to make a new folder for exercise number two. And you're going to need that for this because there's going to be some complexity to it. So I have that screen grab. I have these other ones. I'm going to put them all in there. Then I'm going to take my PSD and my PNG and my JPEG from exercise one, put that nicely into my exercise one folder. So I have my, my finished works all in one place. And then I'll back it up to my thumb drive before I leave class. Now, inspired by this, maybe I have it open in the corner there. I'm going to go to this emoji maker. And I have to pick with just flat shapes. How can I make this guy an image of this guy or get close? This is kind of sketching. So you can see through the random generator, you really have no control. But you could start with something it gives you and then modify it. But I think it's easiest just to start from the beginning by clicking on the trash can. So there are four options, four types of vector shapes you can use. The one that's required that you only use one of is the base shape. These are your base shapes options. From Japanese demon to two types of Santa. They've just added a shaved Santa. I don't know why. I guess it's an elf. <laughs> so... What do I want to start with? The hat. Well, yeah, there's a lot of different ones. The cowboy hat has some advantages, right? Because he's got that hat. So yeah, that might be a good one for me to start with. Or I might decide, okay, I want to do this one and then I'll elaborate on it with my own shapes. Or maybe I like this color better, the kind of pale color. So, but this is the only of these four options that you can only choose one of. This just gets you started. So yeah, I'll go ahead and just start with the cowboy hat. It's a good suggestion. It does not. It could be a, a symbolic emoji, right? Just like there are emojis of everything. I'm doing an animal for the other class. Okay, next, you go to the eye options. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. You're not able to move things around. So even though that hat is the wrong proportion, the wrong shape, I'm not able to move that hat around, right? I just have to take what it gives me as vector shapes. For the eyes, I'm not able to move them around. But... Unlike for the base color, for the eyes, I can layer up multiple images. And it will always, I want you to play around with it because this is what vectors do. It's always going to show the one that you select on top of all the other ones. 
So, for instance, if I want to use these eyes, but I want there to be a lot of black space behind them, because he's kind of freaky looking, right? I can like build up those black shapes and then put those white eyes on top. And the way you know which ones you've selected are there, they show up as, as dark gray. So I kind of like that. And then I don't know if I need these brown eyes anymore. But then I might want some cheeks in there. And I might decide, okay, I want those as cheeks or to remind me of cheeks. Or maybe these. Nope, I like the others. And there are a lot of eye options. Yeah, that could work well. So now I want to put those white eyes on top again, right? And so that gives me a little dimension that might inspire me. So you can layer up as many eyes as you want. They're all going to go on top of your base layer. Next thing with the mouth, you can layer up as many mouths as you want. Now, I might do the mouth. Let's see, there isn't anyone with a big nose that I remember but I can layer up multiples. So there is one with a tongue. There's one with a long mouth that kind of works for a nose, even though it's the wrong color. Yeah, this is probably symbolizing an open mouth, right? But you're using it for your own thing, right? So it's getting close because it's kind of showing us how you can do this with shapes. Now this is just our sketch. We're going to be creating all these shapes ourselves, so obviously we can modify it. Now do I like that mouth or do I like a little bit more teeth, right? And then I can put the nose on top of that. Looks like a yellow grover. I was going to say, kind of, yeah. kind of mixing in there. Yeah. And then, and then <laughs> All right, so now the fourth option are effects. Effects can be a lot of different things, you know, hearts, tears, hands. There's the hat, you know, so I can put the hat over the eyes. The hand back on. Yeah, that makes sense. Put glasses on. I can make them swearing. Now that's pretty hard to do with vector shapes. So what you have to use, and students have done it, uh, but it's easier just to use type typefaces because those are also vectors. So when you use text tools, you are using vector shapes. Oh. And that's how this was made with a certain typeface. So I think it would probably be better just to use like a little square. You would make the, the rounded rectangle with a vector right. and then you would just use a, a white typeface. And that, that counts as a vector shape, even though I'm not going to be demoing that. So there's just lots of ways to do it. This is what they have for a long nose, but I don't like it. That's a nose? I think so. I thought that was a bandage for the eye. Yeah, it could be anything you want. Anything you want. All right, so are there any effects I want? I want you to choose. I want you to try one thing from each of these. And you can use multiple if you want, but at least one from each. I, ex I might use the Zs for the zipper rumpa zoo. I'm doing crying in the other class. Cool. Yeah. Well, then you get to learn it again. It's great. I might do something like that. Looks like a professor that way. Yeah, there you go. All right, so if this is the best I can do, now... I'm going to zoom in until it's as big on my screen as it can be. Well, I can still get a clean screen grab of it. And then we're going to do a screen grab. And the directions are in the assignment to remind you. But you do a screen grab by doing Command-Shift-4 on these Macs. It would be the print screen button on a PC. So you're going to get that gray background on it. And we're going to use that as our sketch to build up on. Now to show you the difference between raster and vector, right? I'm going to zoom out so that I can get to the top of the website where it says export. And then I'm also going to 
download it 